Welcome back to the boathouse. This week, Arabella receives her beautifully fabricated water tanks, thanks to the incredible work of Evan at MS Fabrication in Dorchester. And two of the four tanks will get fully installed. We'll also find out exactly how many gallons the full system will hold. This is the last weekend to order a shirt or a hoodie with a new community crest design. Proceeds from the sale will help us hire on KP, a skilled shipwright that will help the project into the water by next year. That support is key to making the next year of the build a success, so go to the description below and place your orders now before it's too late. In addition to picking up the finished tanks, Anne also brought Evan the template for the galley stove surround that was made up in episode 199 a few weeks ago. A lot of welding, but it went, to, it went together pretty well. Um, ended up putting the covers on. I was pretty happy with how they came out. Um, and then I decided to leave the welds on for strength instead of grinding them flush. No one's really gonna ever see these, so I figured keep them on there. And uh, but yeah, overall it went it went together well. A lot of snowy days in the shop looking at take beads, so it was good. The notes that we took and having the templates together really helped to make sure they were gonna come out right. Um, the one we made, the uh, SETI tank, was the trickiest one because that was one where it was different shapes on both sides but everything else was pretty square and straight so i didn't run into too many headaches did he decide is he gonna put he's gonna strap them down yeah cool. yeah yeah we're gonna strap them down and then we're just excited to see the big visual change of having them in the boat yeah and then all of a sudden everything from here like avalanche is on we've gotten so many other things ready to like just right up to the point and then these will go in and then i think there's gonna be a lot of movement awesome yeah awesome the last thing for Evan today was to do a couple of quick cuts with his water jet. Steve will show you what these are when they get back to Granby. 13. Does that look right to you? Oh, yeah, actually it does. Does it? Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't know, the way it was here, I didn't know <laughs> if it would connect more up this way. But I think it continues, so he's got that note that it continues down, down past the, the past the edge of the past the edge there. So Okay. Yeah, and then he just figured that this would this would resolve itself coming like if you continued that line down that it would so we just have to trust his measurements there. Okay. If it's wrong it's long and you can cut if it. If it's wrong it's long. <laughs> at the very least. aluminum. Holy cannoli. I, it was great working with you guys and uh, still got some more stuff to do for you. So yeah. you probably haven't seen the last of me. Um, yeah. Cool. cool. Well, we'll see you soon then. Sounds good. did a really beautiful job. Yeah, they look great. They look really great. It's a lot of welding. A it's, lot of welding. Yeah, it's so much. So much meticulous welding. Seti tank, pickup tank in the bilge. 
under the nav table and inside the head. This panel is gonna go underneath the side deck, mounted up against the deck beams above the wood stove and above the galley stove. And that way, if there's some flare up in the wood stove or flare up on the galley stove, the overhead there is protected. And even more than that, it just makes it cleaning all of that really easy. So when you cook things like bacon or fry some fish and it splatters all over the place, you just have a nice flat surface to wipe off. And then this one goes against the bulkhead by the sink. So that'll go in like that. And that just gets screwed to the pomade plywood there. And then the galley stove will go in and same deal, it's basically just to give a really nice, smooth, easy to clean surface that's next to the stove. So spills and dribbles and that kind of thing are easy to, to wipe up. And then this one will go like that above the diesel heater. So the diesel heater will be down here, and the stove pipe will come up through the corner. So for those of you all keeping a close eye on the order of things, the tanks got to the boathouse before the settee locker and the diesel heater and tile surround were installed as shown in last week's episode. So you might see a couple shots with these not in place and wonder what was going on. And now you know. Is there a good order of operations here? Well, I'm going to open up where the settee one goes here. Okay. And I think let's try to set that one in first. I cannot get my hands in there. Let me go grab a strap. Perfect. And then the outlet is right there. Yeah, we might have to do a little carving on the set to here to hook up to the outlet but maybe not because this is also going to go up and back i'm going to bring the lid of this basically right up underneath here shall we kill the deliciously warm heater and yeah. uh, see about fitting a little one in the head yeah yeah <laughs> job Evan. It fits like it was made to fit there. glad this one fit. This is the one I was most anxious about. Uh, the bulkheads for the head are parallel, so that one was pretty easy. I knew it was going to be a snug fit, but things were square. We left a decent amount of wiggle room for the set T1, and also that was built square. But this space here is not square. So you can see we're touching the bulkhead here. And we've got, I don't know, a solid five or six inches in the back that we're not touching. Uh, 
and we got the same thing going on over here but in the opposite so with the way the hull lays and the way that this bulkhead and this partial bulkhead lay this is kind of a funky shape in here but we can come down and forward a little bit uh, we can jockey it in there we can go definitely aft with it a bit i've got room to reach in here to get to the turnbuckle which is nice and you'll be able to pop this pin so when you want to move the refrigerator i think if we set the nav table just to hinge up you'll be able to reach in and pop this pin if not you can get to it from here too with the table down that's not bad i think that'll work did i tell you that uh satchel ran the numbers on the tanks Oh no, what are they at? So how many gallons do you think we got? Because when you, Evan, and I were making the rough patterns, we took like the rough size, figured out the volume for a rectangle or a square, cut that in half, and figured that we were, you know, in the ballpark. I thought when I'm like looking at these and thinking about tanks that I, you know, like what does a tank look like? Shapes are hard. Yeah, the shapes are hard. I think that like you've got a couple, something close to a couple of 55 gallon drums. Like my my guess is 100. That was the the hope was to land somewhere between 100 and 120, and be above 90. And I gave Satchel the measurements from the tanks, and I undersized everything ever so slightly. So if they were like 34 and three quarters, I just called it 34. Um, and he came out with all the tanks to be, was it 94.9 gallons, I think? So that's not bad. That's about, you know, we're in, we're in the ballpark. If we didn't have a water maker, I would be more concerned. Um, but I intend to put in a water maker, so that should be sufficient tankage. Uh, and it saves on weight in terms of the tanks and the water, and it also serves on space. You can see how much space these things just ate up so finding another say 30 gallons to hit to it that would mean we need to put another tank this size in the boat to get another 30 gallons which i don't really think is worth it the tank in the bilge ended up being nine gallons on the nose and i think that's pretty adequate so these will drag gravity drain to that and the pickups will be in the bilge and we can put shutoffs to those so i think what would be really great is to shut up fill up the bilge tank shut off everything to it and then when the bilge tank runs dry fill it back up again and that'll give you a really good marker of how many gallons you're using and if you've gone through it in one day or if you've gone through it in four days because uh, otherwise if you're just pulling off all the tanks and they're scattered through the boat and there's not a good spot to dipstick these without really opening up the port because if you go into the back corners where the inlets are you go down two inches and you hit tank. Yeah, let's just pull them a little bit. And it gets fastened. Perfect. I'm gonna make a little 90 degree bronze bracket that we'll put here. And then I'll make another little bronze bracket and we'll put like down here. And by bracket, I mean I'm going to take a little piece of the bronze strapping left over and bend it and put a couple holes in it. <laughs> and one will be 90 in here and one will be whatever this angle is and a couple screws, a couple screws. That'll anchor this side plenty well. Cool. At the beginning of the winter, I had quite a big pile of offcuts from working on Arabella all summer, and I've been burning those in the wood stove. But it is mid-February now, and that supply has run out. Uh, so we're gonna take this chilly day and fire up a little chainsaw in the truck, go down to the wood yard, and get stocked back up on firewood, because winter's not quite done with us yet. The next step was to get the dimensions for the wooden supports that will go under the tanks. 
and for the two big ones in the head and under the nav table, that meant finding a good way to bring the tanks up and down without too much trouble. So, we're gonna work on putting these tanks in today, which is gonna involve putting them in and taking them out a few times. I'm gonna throw a swivel in here, and this way, I can spin the tank as I'm down in the boat because it's a little tight with how it fits in there. And we're gonna throw in another pulley. So we got some climbing gear in play here. I'm gonna use these heavy duty NRS straps to strap the tanks down into the boat and that'll be part of the system that holds them in place. And then we just got a sling. I ran it through the um, swivel here twice so that I can move it around uh, and adjust where the pickup point is between these two straps. But at the same time, it'll stay put once there's some tension on it. And then this will let me move the tank and swivel it around and avoid obstacles in the boat. And then by having the pulley here and the one up here, we've got a little mechanical advantage. So raising and lowering is easier. And this handy device here is made by Petzl and it's called a protraction. And this is what we use on big walls when you're up there for a couple days and you got to pull your gear up behind you. Uh, so it is a self-capturing pulley. The rope can go one way, but there's a jam cleat here with some teeth in it, and that stops it from going the other way. So pretty handy device. It's, uh, climbing gear has proven to be pretty useful throughout the build from time to time. Okay, pause. So at this point, the tank is just floating in here and we can really easily move it exactly where we want it to be. So I'm gonna get that figured out. Do we put it square to the bulkhead? Do we tuck it back in at an angle? So play with that a little bit and then we can start making the wooden pieces that go around it. Off camera, Steve worked out the final patterns for the supports under the nav table tank, and now he'll show you how he did that with the tank in the head. I have this tank sitting here where I want it. So the, the edge here is just up against the build stringers, and the tank is level. I've got a wedge back here, which is just holding the tank out, or inboard rather, a little bit so that we're level. And the next thing you need to do is figure out what the strips that go on top of the frames need to look like. So when Evan made the tanks, they're a lot simpler to make with just a straight angle to the back. But the problem is, is that the hull is curved. So when you take that curved hull and you put a straight line across it, it means that the whole back of that tank isn't supported and we need to support that. So we're putting in cedar that's gonna sit on top of the frames and it's also gonna keep the tank from bumping up against the rivets. We don't want those rubbing and wearing on each other. It's a little challenging to figure out exactly what shape we need back there when you can't really see it or measure it or get to it. So what we're doing, grab a pencil here. I know that the bottom edge of the tank is in line with the build stringer. 
So that's easy enough. And then if we take the ruler, fish it back here. We can put it against the tank. So I'm holding the ruler. You can hear it probably. Flush with the tank. And what I want to do is figure out if we continue that angle on the back of the tank, where we're going to hit the frame. And I'm trying to get a straight line. So this one will be here. Okay. So now we know that if we have that straight angle on the back and we follow that up, we're going to hit the line here. If we follow the tank across, we're going to hit the line here. And if we continue the angle at the bottom, we're going to run out down here. So now I can wrestle this tank out of here, take a string, and connect our higher mark with our lower mark. And that'll give us where the back of that tank lands in relation to the frames. From that string, we can pick up the pattern out of cardboard and then go cut it out of wood. That is for under the nav table, and this is for inside the head. The ones inside the head are so close to the same shape that I'm just going to cut them all out of the same pattern. I'm really a, <clears throat> a big fan of doing the, the glue ups really rough and then putting the pattern on it and cutting it out. It is another step when you go to cut it out, but at the same time, you really don't have to worry when you do the glue up of trying to get everything lined up excruciatingly perfect. Doing it this way <clears throat> probably does create a little bit more waste, but we've got tons of cedar and these are some pretty small pieces that we got these out of that wouldn't have been useful for much else. And I'm running real low on firewood, so <laughs> spending a little extra material is not a big deal for us in this instance.
So when these tanks go in here, it is going to be, hopefully, a very long time before they come out. So I want to take the opportunity here to give all of this a good oil before we close it up. See if we can wrestle that tank in for hopefully the last time for a very long time. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Let me go retrieve that strap. Man, the last few days have been a real tease. This morning I woke up and it was 50 something degrees and now it's down to almost 30. So we dropped, what, over 20 degrees today? Um, which is kind of crazy. You gotta love those days when it starts out warm and finishes cold. Winter is not done with us yet. Uh, made some good progress on the tanks here. So the bottom supports are in uh, and I'm really happy with those. Those turned out well. And this tank is going to be pretty easy to hem in here. I rough milled up a bunch of oak here. And these are just going to go like that and get bolted through the bulkheads. And then same thing across the top. And between that frame and the back, one's bolted across the front and one's bolted across the top. This tank really can't go anywhere. Uh, if it wants to move forward or aft, it's just gonna bump up against the bulkheads. And we can tuck some wedges in there if we need to to make sure that it really doesn't move around. These straps are gonna be there. They're gonna be permanent. Uh, and they are just to help kind of hold everything. And they are also a basically in case of emergency. So if for some unearthly reason, one of these oak partitions lets go, something happens, uh, these straps will keep this tank from becoming totally adrift. They won't stop it from being able to move up and down and fore and aft a little bit, but they will stop it from going to the other side of the boat, which is ultimately what they're gonna end up doing for this tank. The aft tank is a little bit different. It doesn't fit in quite as nice and squarely as this one does. Uh, so it's been a lot more kind of fiddling and figuring out, trying to figure out exactly what we need to do to get that one wedged in really well. So if we look at this tank here, you'll notice that we're, we're tight at this corner. And I've got a wedge in here that I cut that is making up the distance between the bulkhead and the tank. Because the tank is built square and this opening in relation to the hull is definitely not. And we need to maintain a gap over here. So they have to be able to reach into the shack or to this turnbuckle so that we can move the refrigerator. So my thoughts are, so we have this here that holds the nav table. We can attach another block to it and make it come out a little wider. So you can see just the corner of the tank gets caught underneath that. So you can easily beef that up a little bit. And then in the front, I've got a piece here that's cut to match the angle of the tank and the bulkhead. And then I've got another one down at the bottom here. You can see this is the very ends of that base sticking out. So we'll screw this chunk of, well actually we'll screw through the cedar into the oak. Should always screw through the softwood and into the hardwood. So between this cleat on the bottom, this one on the side, this on the top, we'll run another cleat across the back of it. And then we just gotta figure out how to hold this whole tank forward against the bulkhead, which I don't think will be too terribly difficult. Well, this is by far and away the most challenging tank. I'm getting the, the bracings for this because everything's just a little, little funky. 
I haven't messed at all with this tank underneath the seti berth, but this one is kind of like the head. It nestles in there really tightly. It's got a bulkhead fore and aft that fit really solidly on it. Uh, so getting this one in shouldn't really be too much of an issue. So I'll get these ones on starboard figured out and done first, and then we'll dive into the the one in the bilge and the set to one. We'll save the easiest two for last. The last thing I need to do is put a cleat at the top here so that the tank can't come up for any way. It can't bounce or if the boat heaven forbid rolls. But I'm gonna wait to do those until I figure out exactly what the rest of this area up here is gonna look like. These straps are gonna get let into the oak uh, and then this will end up getting covered up with a facade so that looks nice and you don't actually see the tanks. Now this tank is, is a little high in the boat uh, and it's outboard and that is something to be somewhat concerned about. Um, but we're gonna put a water maker in the boat and there's four water tanks in total including the one in the bilge. So if we're somewhere where we can regularly make water uh, this tank can probably be empty the vast majority of the time, as can likely the tank in the head. Uh, and we'll only need to really fill those up if we're going somewhere we won't be able to make water, or if we're going somewhere where we won't be able to get access to water or parts for the water maker. So coastal cruising, anywhere that is more developed, uh, we should be able to leave this tank empty and really only fill it up if we're going for a big crossing. Uh, or if we're going somewhere where we're not going to be able to run the water maker. And this tank will be the one that is the last one filled and the first one drained because it's the one that will most affect the balance of the boat. Thanks for watching, and just a reminder that this is your last chance to order the Community Crest t-shirt or hoodie. That sale goes to support KP, who's taking a year off their life to come work in the boat shop and help get Arabella in the water sometime next spring. Help us make that happen by going to the bonfire link in the video description and place your order this weekend. Like, subscribe, and leave us a comment about the video, or just let us know what you've been inspired to work on lately. And we'll see you again next week.